Greetings, nerdlings. Today, we're going to be talking about ecological succession. We're going to be talking about primary succession first, and in the next video lecture, we're going to talk about secondary succession. So let's get started. Changes in ecosystems is called ecological succession. There are two main types of ecological succession, primary and secondary. If you remember nothing else between the two of those, remember that primary succession does not have soil in the beginning and that secondary succession does. So in primary succession, it's the process of creating life in an area where no life previously existed. And again, no soil is present. In secondary succession, it's the process of restabilization of that community after a natural disaster or a man-made disaster has occurred. Soil is present in this type of succession. So by definition, succession is the series of more or less predictable changes in ecological communities following a disturbance. So today we're going to be discussing primary succession, which is the development of an ecosystem in an area that has never had a community living within it before. So that would be, for example, after a volcano has exploded and igneous rock has been laid down and there is no soil, there is nothing. Another example would be when a glacier recedes and leaves behind bare rock. Those are both types of primary succession. And in both of them, we start off in an area with absolutely no soil whatsoever. So again, it begins in a place without any soil. In the beginning, there is only rock or sand or volcanic ash. And since there's no soil, there is no community. But why is there no soil? Well, in order for there to be soil, there must be nutrients like nitrogen. So why is there no soil? Well, if we don't have any nitrogen or nutrients, we can't have soil. We can't have nitrogen or nutrients unless we have some type of organic matter that has died or decayed and has been decomposed by some type of decomposer. So we're going to talk about that. As you see here, this is a diagram of primary succession and how it occurs. So starting down here, we begin with bare rocks. Absolutely nothing is living there. Then we'll get a pioneer species. Most of the time, pioneer species are lichens. Lichens attach themselves to rocks, and eventually they break down those rocks into sand. As the lichens begin to die, they actually contribute nitrogen into the soil. Decomposers come in to break down those dead lichens, and they put nitrogen into the environment, which starts cycling. We start seeing mosses come in, then we have herbs and weeds. After the herbs and weeds, we have grasses, shrubs, and smaller trees start to come in. As those trees grow, they eventually develop into their full-grown tree. And we have oaks, hickories, beeches, maples. So all of these trees reach their full growth. We have all of the animals and plants that have come in. And we call this a climax community, which is the end point of succession. So starting from the beginning, we have lichens growing on rocks over many years those lichens break the rock down into sand. Lichens, which do not need soil to survive, are called a pioneer species. So why? Well, just like we call the people who first colonized America pioneers, we call the first species to colonize an area a pioneer species. The lichens start to grow larger and some of them begin to die off. Decomposers arrive and break down the lichens. So there are two types of decomposers. We have bacteria decomposers that come in and help break dead or decaying matter down. And we also have fungus that comes in. So the dead lichens and waste materials of the decomposers enrich the sand with nitrogen. And eventually the nitrogen cycle begins. There gets to a point where there is so much nitrogen that we can now call the sand soil. So this is a picture of all the different lichens breaking down rocks in a community. Eventually seeds are blown in by wind or carried by animals or other means and simple plants like mosses start to grow into the new soil. Those plants grow and the soil enriches as the plants die. Herbs and weeds can now start to grow in the thicker and rich soil. 
The simple plants die off, adding more and more organic material into the environment. The soil layer thickens and grasses, wildflowers, and other plants begin to take over. You'll start to see medium-sized animals, birds, different types of insects start to inhabit this area. The vegetation starts to grow more and more close together so it becomes more and more dense and it reduces the amount of available space for growing. Competition between the lichens and other plants eventually takes place. And the lichen typically loses out to the other competitors and it either dies off or it will move to a different area that has more rocks and less plant life. So those plants begin to die out and they add more nutrients to the soil. So now we have shrubs and the little seedlings from trees that start to begin to grow. So again, more insects, more birds, and more mammals have begun to move into this environment. And now, what was once bare rock supports a variety of life. Those plants start to die, as well as the animals, and they start to add, again, more and more nutrients to the soil. So now we have larger trees that can grow. The beech, the oak tree, the maple tree, the walnut tree, those start to reach their full maturity and we start seeing these huge trees. And eventually we form a climax community. A climax community is a mature, stable community that is the final stage of ecological succession. In an ecosystem with a climax community, conditions continue to be stable for all the members of that community, so there's not a lot of fluctuation. In any particular region, it has its own set of climax species, which are the plants that are best adapted for that area, as well as the animals, and it will persist after succession has occurred or finished, until another disruption occurs. So this is another example of primary succession that I thought was really cool. So I took a trip to Alaska, and I got to see the events of primary succession firsthand on my hike through the glacier. So I'm starting off basically backwards. So I got to the glacier and obviously there's no plant life on all of the ice. In the background though, you can start to see plant life. So we go from the glacier, which is completely barren of anything. Once that glacier recedes or melts off, it leaves behind rock or barren rock with no sand or soil. So that's what you're seeing right here is barren rock. You can see Little colonies, though, of lichens starting to take place. So all of this brown right here, these are the little lichens. As I went further, you start to see small grasses and shrubs, as you see here. We're starting to develop a soil layer. You still see some lichens. As I continued, the lichens became more and more sparse, and I started to see a lot more plant life. So right here, I'm starting to see a lot more shrubs, grasses, I'm starting to see tiny little trees start to form. And then as I continued, we had larger trees starting to form, the density of the plant life increased, and eventually you got to a climax community where you had full-grown trees, you had lots of animal life, I was seeing all kinds of little squirrels and uh, that type of thing, there's bears, and we get that climax community. Now, there are different types of climax communities. It doesn't always end in a beautiful forest. Sometimes it ends in a barren desert, but nonetheless, it's still a climax community. So we have a desert climax community here. This is a desert kind of savanna-ish climax community right here that you're seeing. This would be a coniferous forest climax community. And right here would be a rainforest climax community. So in conclusion, these are the summary of events that occur in primary succession. We start off with a barren piece of rock, basically, either a volcano's formed and that's what's left over after all the igneous rock has cooled off, or we have a glacier that is receded and all that's left is the barren rock. So eventually, we have a pioneer species, most of the time a lichen, that comes in, colonizes the rock, breaks that rock down into sand, and as the lichen dies, as well as other materials, it starts to put nitrogen into the environment, and we call it soil. We have changes that occur in the physical environment, like the light, the moisture of the community. Then we have new species of plants that displace the existing plants, because their seedlings are better able to become established in the changed environment. 
The newly arriving species, again, alter the physical conditions, often in ways that enable other species to become established as well. We have all of the animals coming in with or right after the plants that have come in that they need to survive. And eventually we have a climax community that is more or less stable and will become established and have the ability to reproduce itself. At some point in time, disturbances will probably start the process of succession all over again. And that is something we will talk about in our next lecture when we discuss secondary succession. Well, I hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.